Hi everyone, it's Tracy here, the humorous tutor, and in this video we are continuing to get ahead of the game and sculpting our knowledge, talking about the osteology of the skull, and this is part two. Here we're looking at the outside of a whole skull, and so we're looking from the side and therefore we're looking at a lateral view. Starting from the posterior aspect, we have our single unpaired cranial bone at the back, that's the occipital. From this lateral view we can see the temporal bone really really nicely and so that's a paired bone and here in this case we're looking at the left. Superior to the temporal bone we have the parietal bone, so parietal in Latin referring to well, the wall and so this forms a major portion of the lateral wall of the cranial vault and of course anterior to the parietals we've got the frontal We've got the sphenoid hidden a little bit inside it. We can see the zygomatic bone um, being that cheekbone there. From this view, we can see a, uh, a, we can see the mandible. We can also see, let's have a look. Uh, yep, we can see the maxilla nice and clearly there, uh, being the upper jawbone, forming the nasal bridge that we commonly know it as. We've got the two. Uh, nasal bones and then looking in the medial portion of the orbit there we've got the very very small lacrimal bone there remembering that lacrimal meaning tears and then we've also got a portion of the ethmoid forming the medial wall of the orbit. From this view we can also see the three foramen that we went over in the previous video and so above and below the orbit we'd find the inf sorry, supra and infraorbital foramina and also the mental foramen in the region of the cheek. Again looking at the zygomatic bone here outlined we can see the three processes um, just named after the bones that they articulate with and that'd be the frontal, temporal um, and maxillary processes. And we can see from this view really nicely the zygomatic arch and we can also see that the zygomatic arch is actually formed by the zygomatic and the temporal bone together. And so we've got the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and then the zygomatic process of the temporal bone forming the zygomatic arch. Now looking at the temporal bone, which is really nice in this view, first of all we can see what we can call the ear hole and so that is called the external acoustic meatus external outside because we also have an internal one we'll cover in a future video acoustic relating to sound and meatus um, actually means a route kind of like a bus route for example or so like a passage and so literally the external acoustic meatus is the outside sound passage which is your ear hole now inferior and posterior to that we see the mastoid process masto here actually means um, breast and so this is a large rounded uh, breast like protrusion um, on the underside of the temporal bone and so they've called that the mastoid process and then we can also see anterior to the mastoid process is a much skinnier process called the styloid process and styloid referring to the fact that it's quite slender and um, is shaped a bit like a stylus is how I remember that. And so getting rid of all of that let's have a little bit of a look at the mandible now from this lateral view and I've drawn in what it would look like if the zygomatic arch was removed there. And so posteriorly on the condylar process we have the mandibular condyle remembering that a condyle is a smooth um, rounded projection typically typically found on the end of a bone and it helps to form a joint in this case forming the uh, temporal mandibular joint and so the mandibular condyle the rounded part is going to sit in the mandibular fossa and so the mandibular condyle is the rounded part that's on the mandible and the mandibular fossa is the indent that's found on the temporal bone and together they form the TMJ, the temporal mandibular joint. Anterior to the mandibular condyle, the other process is the coronoid process. I believe coronoid here refers to crown and it's that nice rounded crown shaped process um, anterior to that. And finally on this view we can see really nicely the arm, um, the branching of the uh, ramus of the body of the mandible. And so in this next portion, let's have a look at if we were to envision we cut on the mid-sagittal plane of the skull and then we viewed it from where that smiley face is. And so that's what we would see here and that would be a medial view of the mid-sagittal section of the skull. Here looking at the mandible, very clearly we can see there's a hole on the inner portion or the medial portion of the ramus there and that would be the mandibular foramen. So not to get that confused with the mental foramen. 
Having a look at the hard palate just quickly, um, what we can see, the anterior portion of the hard palate is actually the palatine process of the maxilla. And then posterior to that, forming the posterior hard palate, we have the palatine bone. And so the hard palate is actually composed of the maxilla, specifically the palatine process, and the palatine bone coming together to form that there. Also really cool from this view, we can see um, some interesting features of the ethmoid. And so on the ethmoid, we've got that pointy portion up the top, basically projecting into the cranial vault itself, and that is the Christogali. Christogali, uh, Latin for coxcomb or the rooster's crest, and it does in fact look a bit like a, the crest of a rooster, and that's projecting into the cranial vault, allowing for attachment of the meningeal layers of the brain there. And then kind of inferior to that, we can see the perpendicular plate. Okay, so what I'm going to need you to do is kind of try to uh, envision the brain sitting where I've just kind of drawn it in red there. And so on the underside of the frontal lobe, we've got that olfactory tract and the olfactory bulb. And we can see in yellow, envisioning those olfactory nerves kind of coming from the nasal cavity and entering the cranium there via the olfactory foramina of the cribriform plate. And so the cribriform plate is kind of what I've drawn in there in orange, and that's going to contain the olfactory foramina. And so you can see indeed that the perpendicular plate is perpendicular or sitting at a right angle to the cribriform plate, which is sitting on the horizontal plane there. And then in this view, we can see the bony nasal septum. We can see that the superior portion of the bony nasal septum is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid. And then inferiorly, that perpendicular plate um, is actually joined to the vomer, and that vomer is going to form the inferior portion. And so together, we've got the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and then the vomer together forming the bony nasal septum. Hopefully that helped to visualize some of these cranial and facial bones in relation to each other. Um, and we will see you next time. Thank you very much.